Hello, this is Brent Gregory here to help you answer seven questions that you may have regarding accounting. And those seven questions range from such things as the purpose of accounting to the types of accounting information, who uses that information, uh, what's the regulation on accounting and what's some ethical issues that will be related to accounting. Now let's um, examine those questions again. Um, purpose, what is the purpose of accounting? Secondly, the second question will be what types of accounting um, are there? Thirdly, the statements, what are the purpose of financial statements? Who, who is going to use those financial statements and rely upon those financial statements? What are the financial statements? The sixth question deals with regulation, and that is what regulation applies to accounting information. And the final issue deals with ethics. What is the role of ethical and social responsibility considerations in accounting? So that leads us back to the start. What is the purpose of accounting? And the purpose of accounting I've drawn from SAC 1, Statement of Accounting Concepts Number 1. And I've changed it around a bit to break it up so so as to highlight really what accounting is. Accounting is a mechanism that provides information to users to enable decisions about how to allocate scarce resources. So what is uh, the purpose of accounting? Well, it's how um, it's a tool for allocating scarce resources. And we will work through this um, definition to look at it from different perspectives. We'll look at you know, who the users are, what the information is. When considering accounting, we also need to be aware that um, accounting deals with how we record, categorise, summarise and report activities of an entity. It's probably reverse worth reviewing that because this is something that you will be expected to become quite familiar with and understanding that accounting deals with those items, how we record information in a journal, we categorise it in an account, we summarise the information in a um, in the general ledger and then the trial balance and how we report the information in the financial statement. So what types of accounting are there? That's our second question. Now in broad terms, we can consider two types of accounting. And they're on the top line, financial accounting and management accounting. Management accounting deals with the reports used by internal decision makers um, in a business and, or other entities. So I'll use the term business just can, because it's convenient, but when I say business, it could be any type of entity for which we're recording the information. Whereas financial accounting deals more with the production of reports that will be used by stakeholders that are external to the business. Increasingly, and I'll come back in a few moments and talk a little bit more about financial accounting and management accounting, but increasingly we're finding a third type of accounting, and that's sustainability accounting. Now ultimately, it will be accommodated in financial accounting and management accounting, but because issues to do with climate variability and the general way we're not looking after the planet as well as we should be, uh, we've caused a number of environmental costs not to be taken into consideration. So sustainable accounting will become um, a really big issue over the next decade. There's also a fourth area emerging for accountants, and this is just part of management accounting, but it's the we it's it's becoming so significant that I need to highlight it specially for you. And it's an area we would call metrics or, or analytics. Um, it covers the proliferation of management of measurements that are now being made of activity of things. So for example, um, there's measures in, of, of internet traffic is probably one of the most significant. There's increasingly measures of what's happening on, happening in households or in farms. 
And this increase in measurement has come about because of the increased uh, need related to sustainability and the increased ability because of the internet, communications generally, and the cheapness of measuring devices. And plus, there's also the increased computing power. So for accountants of the future and anyone in business or anyone dealing with decision making, the area of metrics will become increasingly significant to them. So back to financial accounting, and I said it deals with uh, reporting to external stakeholders. So those external stakeholders are going to make decisions about the entity. And so what decisions are external stakeholders likely to need to make? Well, it could be whether or not they provide the entity with credit or they invest in the entity. It could be uh, regulators or taxation um, uh, related to tax that needs to be paid. It could also be people that are thinking of providing services to an entity or thinking of becoming their customer. And so there'll be certain characteristics that um, those financial statements will need. And we'll also look at, a little bit later, um, as you remember one of the questions is what are the financial statements, what makes them up. Um, as we've already mentioned, that management accounting is produced by people internal to the organisation and there's much greater flexibility with management accounts than there is with financial accounts. Financial accounts need to be um, relied upon by people external. Whereas management accounts, um, you, people there can go and find it much easier to check up on information. But in order to save time, we find that very often management reports will be consistent with um, financial reports and consistent with accounting standards. So this will enable them to be used for the basis for doing um, the financial reports. Let's just consider a little more about sustainability accounting. And the need for sustainability accounting has really risen because from some perspectives, accounting has failed the capitalist system. As a society, we've failed to record all the costs of an item. And so we've made decisions on the basis that some items are, are treated as being much cheaper than they really are. So to address that, we're currently going down a path to the sustainability accounting. And initially it's pretty basic stuff. We're just recording um, usage levels of things and balances of things. And they might be such things as water and carbon and pollution. But the ultimate goal is to attach appropriate costs to these items. The first attempts we have at this are likely to be not so accurate. However, our skills will get better and better in this area. And uh, this will be uh, an area of significant improvement over the, the next decade. What's some examples of sustainability accounting at the moment? Um, such things as the GRI, the Global Reporting Initiative, um, and things like the Greenhouse Gas Protocols. In Australia, the National Water Accounts is an example of where, for water now, there's standards with um, the standards that are there, there's only think about five of them, but they're very similar to financial um, accounting standards. However, the difference is they measure things in litres, not in dollars. So there's an overview of the types of accounting. In summary, two types, financial and management. With uh, increased um, importance of sustainability accounting and of metrics over the coming decade. In what we're looking at here, our emphasis is going to be on financial accounting. So from financial accounting, we produce financial statements. So what's the purpose of financial statements? Well, let's have a look at what they are. They're a structured representation that provide information about an entity to enable decision making. So when we say a structured representation, what are they a structured representation of? They're a structured representation of the financial position and the financial performance of the entity. And so what do they provide information about? Well, naturally, they provide information about 
the financial position and the financial performance of the entity, and as well, they also provide specific information about the cash flows, because uh, the cash flows will be different from the profit position. So the cash flows will be different from the financial performance. Though there should be some correlation. And why do we do this? To enable decisions about how to use economic resources. Now, who is going to make these decisions? Well, we've, we've already talked that financial accounts could be used by external bodies as well as they could be used by internal bodies. And we will address the who in just a few minutes. There's a few other things we need to consider also about the purpose of the financial statements. And that is, they also provide feedback on how well management is looking after the resources of the business. And they are prepared according to the accounting standards. And a good introduction to the accounting standards will be accounting standard AASB 109, paragraph 9. And why will that be a good introduction? Because it talks about the purpose of financial statements. AASB 109 talks about financial statements generally. So in summary, what are the financial statements? Financial statements are a map to help us decide where we need to go. And it's useful in thinking about financial statements in that regard. They are a map, a representation, a map, to help people work out where they want to go. So, who are those people that want to work out where they want to go? Well, naturally there can be the managers of the business. But they also have access to management reports and in fact they'll probably use a lot more management reports than the, the external reports, than the financial reports, because financial reports are prepared primarily for uh, external stakeholders. And who are they? Well, as we can see there's a whole range of external stakeholders ranging from investors, creditors, lenders, suppliers, and you know, insurers are just an example of suppliers. Um, suppliers will ultimately become creditors. And creditors have a lot in common with lenders. So there, there's some common elements there. But also customers could rely upon financial statements. And why would a customer rely upon them? Well, depending on the nature of the business, but if, if, if long-term supply was an issue for you, and especially if it was a specialist area, you'd be, want to be confident that the business would remain there. And also there'll be regulation and taxation that will rely upon those financial statements. Now, what are the financial statements? Because we have talked about financial statements a fair bit and we've talked about how they show the financial position and the financial performance of the business as well as cash flows. So naturally expect to find some representation of those things. So financial performance is the income statement, the financial position is the balance sheet and the statement of cash flows deals with the cash flows. Now there's also um, Changes in equity, notes to the accounts, uh, some prior period information, especially dealing with, uh, well, specifically, the most the one that must be there is the balance sheet at the beginning of the period, as well as the balance sheet at the end. And there could also be supplementary reports, and that could deal with uh, taxation information, sustainability reports. We've talked about the importance of that growing and CSR stands for Corporate Social Responsibility. There may be reports with regard to that. Let's have a look at some of those statements in a bit more detail. There's the income statement where we report the profit or the loss. How do we work that out? Revenue less expenses. There's the balance sheet. And the balance sheet answers the question, what equity do the owners have in the business? And what is that equi equity represented by? 
Later on, we will study the accounting equation. Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. In this, in the balance sheet, equity equals assets minus liabilities. And this is just another way I've got here of representing the accounting equation. And then assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. In the balance sheet, then we talked about the cash flows. So the financial statements are prepared on the accrual basis. So this is going to mean that revenues and expenses do not perfectly match with cash inflows and cash outflows. So cash outflows are reported. And when they're reported, they're also grouped in the following mechanism. What comes from operating income, what comes from investing and what comes from financing. The next is a statement as a changes in equity. Uh, typically this will appear at the end of the income statement and it deals with capital. So what's capital? That's another way of saying owner's equity. Actually it's one particular element of owner's equity. And how is the changes in equity worked out? Well it's the capital, the opening balance, plus any profit, plus any contributions unless any distributions and that equals the closing capital balance. That's the changes in equity. There'll also be notes to the accounts. So notes to the accounts answers queries that users may have regarding assumptions and accounting policies is a, a clear area where assumptions are spelled out. So what are some accounting policies would be uh, how inventory is valued or what depreciation method is used. The key purpose of the notes to account is to make things visible that other way, ways that otherwise may not have been visible. We also have supplementary reports and as we've said they could be a comparison of accounting income and taxable income and they could be voluntary reports such as sustainability reporting. Question six deals with regulation. What regulation is there? And I've grouped regulation into three significant areas. In Australia, and we're, we're looking here in Australia, but accounting is very much an international discipline and every country, or the vast majority of countries, will have some similarity to this. So there's regulation in Australia, that's the, the, um, the legislation of the Corporations Act 2001. There is also accounting standards, and in Australia there's the uh, Australian Accounting Standards Board, but there's also international accounting standards. So now all Australian accounting standards are compatible with the international accounting standards. And there's the accounting bodies. In Australia, there's the Institute of Chartered Accountants and the Certified Practicing Accountants, uh, the two most long-standing groups and as well as that there's the Institute of Professional Accountants in Australia which has recently gone under a name change. Now to be members to practice accounting um, you'll need to be a member of one of these accounting bodies and those accounting bodies um, hold standards to a number of things and require members to, um, to do things in certain ways. Now, Ethical considerations is one of those issues and we'll look at that as well. But there's also things that um, just cycles back to uh, ensuring you comply with the accounting standards. I probably should say that also there will be increasing attention to um, sustainability accounting as far as regulation goes. So there will be other issues that came in from that perspective. Now ethics. Um, what is the role of ethics in accounting? Well, some things that you'd already have some sense of. There is many users of accounting information and so important decisions are made on the basis of that accounting information. But many of the users, um, but there are many users of accounting information, not just the, the entity that produces them, 
and there are even more people that are affected by the decisions made. So you need to bear this in mind when you're preparing accounting information because the responsibility of accountants stretch beyond the entity for which they're providing services. Um, the accounting profession therefore takes ethical considerations pretty seriously and they've become quite refined. So there's just um, one thing I'd like to direct your attention to here is that the accounting bodies, in particular the Institute and the CBA, have an ethical code. And the ethical code is to support accounts to discharge their ethical responsibilities. It's to give some guidance to um, how they deal with certain ethical situations because many of these situations have come up before. And the, um, the ethics for professional accountants, um, APES 110 is the code, and that's a pretty big document but a very useful document. And I'll just highlight a few things about it. Well, firstly, that it exists, and that's what it is. And there'll be some supporting material that goes with this that will provide links to this information. The um, APES 110 highlights five fundamental principles that accountants need to be to have integrity, they need to be objective, they need to have professional confidence, competence and display due care. <coughs> They also have responsibilities for confidentiality and for professional behaviour. Now that's just a, an introduction um, to what's available in the ethical code. There is one area or one general area that probably tends to come up more than others and that's the frequent tension um, is between the desires of people paying for the preparation of the financial information. I see another have a small mistake there. Whoops, let me go back. Um, is the, let me recap on that. A, a frequent tension is um, between the desires of the people paying for the preparation of the information and the needs of all the other users of that information. And we've already been through examples of who some of those other users are. Because the financial reports are relied upon by all users. And so users expect reports have been produced in compliance with legislation and professional standards, including the accounting standards, but, but, but standards generally. But, uh, that's an overview of the seven questions. Uh, I will put a link at the end of this where you can find more resources to support this. And there will also be a number of videos following this which build on particular areas. Thank you.